Here we are, bottom of the Smash Mountain. And today, I am joined by somebody who is not inside as would be normally the case, I think, when recording remote podcast interviews. Today, Trevor, also known as Kusater, am I pronouncing that correctly? Kusotari, it's all right. Kusotari is touching grass. What an amazing feat. What an amazing accomplishment because this is a true gamer and modder right here. Trevor, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having me, Jesse. I appreciate it. And I was so excited to intro you that I also forgot to give a shout out to my lovely patrons, patrons over at patreon.com slash bsmpod. Thank you for making this ship go. Now that I've jumbled this a little bit, I want to get started with your origin story as it pertains to getting into Smash in general. Did you grow up playing Nintendo games as a kid? Oh, absolutely. My intro to Smash was probably being like five and six years old playing Super Smash Bros. Melee at my best friend's house, um, you know, getting stomped by his older brother, <laughs> as I imagine is the case with a lot of people, maybe not the same game, but <laughs> yeah, so that was that's pretty much how I got rolling. And then, you know, Brawl came out 2008. Obviously, I played that, and I thought it was the pinnacle of gaming at the time. <laughs> it's so fun as a casual game. I, I, I don't like it when people like to knock it around in general, but come on, Subspace Emissary, and I was watching, we'll get to this, but I have to say it right now, I forgot how amazing the sound is on. All the sound effects in that game are so good. I mean, I like the sound effects in 64 and Melee and in Brawl. I didn't realize until today, you know what? Brawl might actually have the edge on Melee in terms of sound design. Like when you hit, get hits, laser sounds, the final smashes, they sound amazing. I love it, man. And I mean, maybe a controversial opinion, but I super like the weird realism, crispy art style as well. I'm really into into the brawl art style. Yeah, because in Smash 4, the first thing that I noticed when I started playing that game was, oh man, all the attacks have these annoying like streaks or whatever. Like, like, like when Mario does his forward tilt, there's a yellow... There's a yellow mark around his leg. Meanwhile, in Brawl or in the other games preceding in 64 and Melee, you would just see his leg get kicked out. But it's almost as if they were trying to make it like flashier and sh like brighter by adding like like uh, uh, an animation on top of the whatever the body part is, whatever it is. Like now there's an accompanying like orb to sort of almost say, here's your hitbox. I guess that's might be the philosophy there, but just it's too bright sometimes to me. Yeah, bright is a really good word. I think that in some of the later Smash games, they've definitely moved away from that realism, common graphic area where it's like all these characters come together in um, there's some sirens, but it's uh, like all these characters come together in like this realism kind of space that they where they all have this common ground but now it's more like they're in like a matrix cartoon dimension <laughs> where everything is slapstick and there's these trails on all their motions and everything so yes yes they they embrace the slapstick side of things that's a great way to put it so for you you're playing brawl it's one of the best games ever i mean like i was saying before Super fun to play, casually speaking. It's a little... I'm sure there are some people who might be listening who have gotten chain-grabbed by Ice Climbers one too many times or gimped by Meta Knight one too many times. But other than that, really fun game. So that led to PM all the way back in like 2011, if I recall correctly, or maybe even earlier. But people said, you know, we could actually do some cool modifications because the Wii is very easily... <laughs> moddable you can very easily get in there and start doing stuff which is great thank you nintendo we take this oh, yeah. <laughs> taking its security of its own of their own devices um well very seriously i guess <laughs> not really and we started to see modifications of brawl because melee that wasn't really a thing but in brawl that was the game that really took off in terms of different mods that started to happen back in the early 2010s but how old are you at this point i mean did you hear about pm once it started to roll out or did you get into this a little bit later i'm 21 years old so no definitely i was not i didn't have enough of a prefrontal cortex to get into pm when it was actually actively happening i hopped on like just months after it shut down in 2015 you know a 15 year old trevor hopped on the modding train <laughs> good timing right i know seriously and i got i got into it by um because i just rediscovered brawl actually and i was i was playing with my brother 
and uh, I was looking up like Lucas combo videos and they were all PM, you know? <laughs> oh, there you <laughs> go. Yeah, they were all PM and I was like, this looks way sicker than whatever I'm doing, man. <laughs> <laughs> is this like a mode of the game you have to unlock what's going on they're moving so fast no, dude, like how many like how much do i have to play you know a cruel mode whatever to unlock shadow the hedgehog so i can play whatever game this guy's playing you know what i mean exactly so that that was your introduction you're just trying to find because like my introduction to competitive melee was you know old old tournament videos that were on youtube when i was starting to look at youtube at 2006 and that was it was still very new at the time but for you, it's it's almost as if it was just like a completely different world because even though it's the same game, they play very differently. So I can't even imagine. Like to me, Melee looked like a different game when professionals were playing it versus when I played it. But for you, it literally is a different game. So once yeah. you discovered that, what's the what are the next steps? You said you got into it shortly after the season. Well, well, whatever happened with the with the PM with the PM stuff, it's it's 2015. Get, getting into 2016, what are the next steps for you? I mean, Discord, if it was around, it had to have been really new. So, how do you get involved? So, at that point, I was clicking through my Lucas combo videos, and in my recommended tab on YouTube, I start getting uh, like modding videos recommended to me. PMEX, right, which is the engine that so many of these mods are built off of so that you can properly clone characters and then, you know, replace the clones. So I get hit with ALM 5252's custom build, you know, and it has Saki and it has Cloud and all these characters. And I'm like, whoa. So I'm watching these videos and I'm like, Knuckles, what are they? how do I play this? Right. So I start looking at, you know, how dolphin whatever i can't do it potato computer at the time 2015 i'm using my family room computer you know oh yeah let's go <laughs> yeah. let's go exactly exactly you know how that goes so but uh, i started getting into it and i i joined their discord and i you know was just all over i was wide-eyed you know everything was crazy i was like i've never modded a video game before so this is like crazy to me everything is new and sparkly and there's a hundred characters what is happening so yeah talk about that first time where you finally get everything to go because it's not it's not necessarily a super easy process you don't just press one button and then it all magically changes into a modded game so for your wii once you finally got everything figured out you finally pull it up just right there in front of you you've been watching it for either a few weeks or a few months and you're just like oh yes like what what do you remember the first time you played at one of the mods oh yeah so <laughs> so at the time i had we had one nintendo wii and it was a family console so in my living room i i hook up the wii and i'm going back and forth with this sd card right and <laughs> you know everybody's like looking at me weird like, <laughs> so i'm so finally i get i get Project MEX, ALM 5252's custom build, <laughs> booted up. <laughs> this was my introduction to Project M was a custom build. It wasn't even the original build of Project M. So I, I get it booted up finally. And I'm I'm we nunchuck. I'm I don't even have a GameCube controller, Let's right? Go. So I'm <laughs> no, so I'm trying, right? I'm trying my best. I'm having a moderate amount of fun playing against the computers with incorrect AIs because they're modded characters and they're <laughs> SDing three times a game, you know? And I'm like, hey, you know, I don't know how to play this game, so that's okay. So I end up, you know, bothering one of my brothers to come over and sit in the sit in the living room with me and play this. And we're just going through the roster one by one, you know, and we're I'm discovering all of these amazing new characters. You know, obviously Roy and Mewtwo are back. Incredible, awesome classics. But then there's characters like Nintend, you know what I mean, from Mother One, and I'm like, what? This is insane. So I'm I'm going back and forth, and I'm stomping my brother, you know, and he he doesn't quite he's not quite as mystified because he hasn't had the same experience as me. He just comes and sits down, and he's like, that looks a little different, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you don't understand. You have to watch these Lucas combo videos, and then we'll go from there, okay? <laughs> Exactly. No, no, no. Look, look, look in the recommended. What is different about that video? So <laughs> then, you know, I start digging around. I start going to yard sales. I start going to my friend's house trying to find old GameCube controllers, you know, uh, and then finally, exactly, things start cooking. And I'm like, okay, let's check out some of the tech. And then I actually start going headfirst into, you know, 
what is the Project M Tech, which is, you know, of course, from all of the Melee Tech. But that was my introduction was neither, I mean, not seriously playing Melee and not even playing an official build of Project M. <laughs> so that was that was my introduction was me like going on a two and a half minute ramble every time we go back to the character select screen and my brother being like playing with a <laughs> Wiimote nunchuck not understanding. <laughs> and so you finally get all that started. You're playing. Your brother doesn't quite get it. You realize that there's some kind of deep understanding that you're forming with the community that you're starting to get into more and more and the game itself, the modified games themselves, and you're just start probably starting to look around like, okay, what other PMX builds are there? I need to try this one and you try this one. And at what point did you start stay, saying to yourself, I have ideas. I, I think I, I think I could do some stuff here. So, <laughs> so I joined the discord server for this project MEX build a server that still exists. Um, and you can go back to, early 2016 and see me chatting around asking about you know the the characters that were on dev streams and me wanting them right and i'm you know i'm nobody to these people i've been doing it for a little bit now you know um but i so badly want to be in the in crowd because i want to play the characters that they're playing on stream that i can't download off brawl vault <laughs> <laughs> so i'm like how do i do this so i start you know just being more active in the discord basically and one day um, late 2016, um, I start getting, well, I reached out first. I was like, look, how do I, I, please let me prove myself. I've never touched any of the modding tools in this community, but I'm like, I, it's, I know, I know how to do it. I'm great. This is like modding. Batman Begins. <laughs> it's exactly like Batman Begins. So then I'm, so I hit up this dude in the discord named Narrowven, who is still active in, in, you know, our build now. And I'm hitting him up because he's one of the top dogs. He's an admin in that server. Oh, yeah. And exactly. So I form that connection. We have a dialogue going on. And he says one day, he's like, I have this idea, man. But, like, it's kind of getting shot down. I don't know the main dev can really do it. It's a spinoff build of this ALM 5252's EX build. But it's going to be, like, the tournament edition. So we're going to you know, cut all of the incomplete characters, polish things up, and that's going to be the build, right? So he's like, do you mod? And I was like, yeah, I mod a lot. Like, you wouldn't believe how much I mod, right? So, <laughs> so he starts giving me stuff to do, and I'm like, oh, my God. So I'm sitting in my room, which I've, I've migrated the Wii to my room now, right? Yeah. So I'm sitting in my room, you know, I'm 16 years old, and I'm running into the living room to plug in my SD card to try some modding thing, running back to my room. It's one o'clock in the morning. I have school in six hours, right? And I'm just trying to figure it out <laughs> because I need so badly to get in. <laughs> and eventually I succeeded in extremely minor modifications of adding electric effects to dr mario you know <laughs> so, yes let's go now let's go i'm in the door they think that i know what i'm doing <laughs> just added the electrical effects it took me like 10 minutes no big deal it's whatever i just had a lot of other projects that's why i'm getting back to you three days later it's like whatever so I'm in school in case you forgot <laughs> <laughs> but now i've used the tools and i legitimately kind of am understanding what's happening with the you know now archaic tools that brawl was using in late 2016 early 2017 but i get into the dev room finally and all of the people who are posting the videos and the showcases that i've been watching now i'm in there with them and i'm like i don't know what's happening <laughs> you know so I, it was it was a bit of a learning curve and i had to learn very quickly or else i would have been found out a little too early into my journey <laughs> yes exactly so like yeah in a basic picture, you don't have to give me a step-by-step, -step, but what does one have to do in order to modify a uh, ALL2, a few thing? Pardon me? The, <laughs> the, uh, the ALF2F, ALFMA, uh, Full Metal Oculus Brotherhood, FMAB? What's the... Full Metal Oculus Brotherhood. 
what what are you asking me? No, right so now? the build that you were playing at first. Oh, okay. ALM five two five two. That's his username. Right, right, right. That's so I'm Alm. gonna forget that again. I do apologize. Okay, Loving call him Alm from Fire Emblem. So in order to do that, you allegedly um in order to allegedly modify this game. Yes, yes, yes. You need <laughs> um you would need tools such as WinImage um, so that you can open SD files if you're, you know, if you're extracting files directly. But if you have a physical SD, you don't need it. Um, and of course, you know, without um, actually modifying the integrity of the actual game, because we love Nintendo and, you know, God bless, bless up, Nintendo's great. Um, it actually, basically the way that it works is all of the paths and the file names are the same as they are in the actual um, directories of the game itself. So it basically overwrites all of those things so that you can modify it. So you just upload your files, they overwrite it, and you modify it using the custom tools that are made by the community with our scripting and everything like that. That's very cool. But I know it was yeah. more complicated than what you make it sound. But you're Allegedly. still you're still not being found out though. You're in the dev room. People will be doing stuff, and you're just like, must understand more. Must understand more. Meanwhile, you're just you know going through life. Like by day, you are Trevor. You are going to school. But by night, and sometimes <laughs> into the late hours of the night, you're trying desperately to figure all this out. And so by right. the time we get to 2017, where are you at this time? 2017. I am in my. 2017 I'm in my junior year of high school and I am using every moment that I have not dedicated to school uh dumping hours into this everything that Nirvan asks me to do he says do you know how to do this and I say absolutely and <laughs> then I stay up and Still. I learn it so that I can get it to him because I need him to put in a good word for me and I need him to want me around <laughs> and also at this point you know we're becoming buddies and he starts saying you know I my idea for this build is kind of branching off out of the realm of making a tournament edition for this otherwise existing build. I have a different idea for it because I want to add some of these other characters that aren't in the original build, you know, Alm's build. Um, and he's like, you know, I think we can just call it re, you know, it, that because that can mean so many things that can be redux, rebirth, the remix. Right. So he's saying all of these things and I'm like, shit dog sounds cool yeah let's do it <laughs> you know I, whatever it's just him and me though you know i'm doing things for alms build but then also he's hitting me up in dms building his own image of what he wants this to be and it's me and him he's the lead i'm the only dev there we go <laughs> you know? so that's kind of where we're going so finally um, we're doing this and we have our own little secret channel in the discord that's existed for you know, only a few weeks at this point, we moved it out of our DMs. And then one day, Alm and Troy, who are some of the other admins, and obviously Alm is the lead of the build, they hop in there and they're like, what is this channel? Who is this person? <laughs> like, what, why, why is he working on your thing? He's in our dev rooms. And it's confusing. There's, there's a mutiny going on, right? So, you know, Niravan explains what's happening. Alm and Troy are on board, so we get things cooking. We make a new server for it in 2017, um, and we begin like seriously dumping our hours into Remix. Instead, you know, we abandon the days of ALM 5252's custom project dem build with you know questionable, shoddy characters ripped from the internet. You know, and we're like, we're gonna make some of our in-house stuff. We're gonna try to polish some of these things up, and we're gonna make this presentable in a way that maybe it hasn't been before, you know, because this is still kind of in the fledgling days of modding. It's been happening for a few years, but we're getting out of the vertex edit territory where everything is kind of in a weird spot. Um, and it was not well received at first. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. I know it really wasn't. And, you know, for me, I'm brand new to this. I don't understand any of the politicking of, <laughs> of this community you know it's i it's weird to me and it's still a little puzzling to me now um and you know for the sake of it i won't name individuals because you know that we're now we're you know four years later and most of them are 
my friends and very kind and helpful. <laughs> but a lot of people um, saw us sort of, you know, the, the fledgling remix team as something that just kind of ripped things from the greater community, um, took attention where it wasn't deserved and things like that. Um, so that was an interesting spot to be put in as someone who had been modding not very long. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a particularly warm welcome. <laughs> You know, so it it was it was strange to say the least to to get out of like I'm doing a funny thing for a children's party game, and now it's like oh people don't like me. <laughs> you know, that and was weird. You're you're having to grow up in a lot of different ways. It's not just I need to get better at modding. It's also like I need to like hear what people have to say, even if they're saying really awful things to me, and I just have to sort of take it on the chin because what else are you gonna do? You can. You can complain about it to whoever, but there's very few people to talk about all this stuff because, I mean, you were talking about your family earlier. They don't have to be, uh, like, awful people or anything. Like, even the most understanding parents will be like, uh-huh, uh, 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 okay. Because they, don't, they don't, I mean, they did mod brawl as children. There's, there's just, like, not quite a, a connect there. So, like, how do you, how do you make it make sense to you as you continue to mature and get older then? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, at that point, I only have who I have, you know, I, like you say, I can't really bring it out of the space that it was birthed in. I can't, it, it would take too long. It would take, how do you explain it? You know, you have to start, you know, the, it, you know, it's the late 90s, and Nintendo is developing this game for the Nintendo GameCube. You can't start, there's no good place to start with that. So you have to give like a weird bare bones thing, but it ultimately becomes like, even my girlfriend now, you know, she'll ask me, and uh, because something will be upsetting me, you know, I get in a tiff with somebody um, when I'm modding, and, and she'll want to know what happened, and I'm like, someone's being rude, you know, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the for the concise explanation you know what i mean um because like you say it doesn't matter how much people care about me it's 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 not a matter of them not caring it's just that they literally it would be so difficult to make them understand so i kind of only have my brothers in arms that are in this development space with me you know and um i'm gonna do a quick flip looks like yep <laughs> That's not better. It's okay. We'll make it work. So that's kind of what I have. Is I have the people who I started out in this with. So we're just talking and it it breeds resentment, you know what I mean? But some somehow I end up getting pushed out as kind of the the PR person um who's who gets to talk to everybody else who isn't wait. in our little <laughs> wait you're like you're like the whip in a political party you're supposed to be the one who like <laughs> goes out and takes it on the chin but yet you're saying hey we're just moving forward we're doing our own thing you can settle down oh that sucks yeah it's okay but uh so i kind of get shoved out to try to mediate this because there's pre-existing elitism happening that you know goes back to the to the conception of alms build you know it's it far predates me um but i'm kind of the one who gets thrust out into the light to to be like hey, everybody let's be nice please <laughs> you nice. know yeah right so uh very quickly i have to become fairly adept at doing that and diffusing things as they happen um because it wasn't very accepting at first but as we started to grow a little bit and got out of dev hell which oh my gosh you know that could be a whole episode i'm sure it was for over a year we were we hadn't released anything you know um but finally once we kind of grew out of that space and we finally start putting things out that is original things then it's like okay um people can appreciate that we do have some value to the community that we share with them you know what i mean um I guess for all intents, I guess for all intents and purposes, we we pa we got through the rite of passage. You know what I mean? We produced something yep. for the community. That was, you know, we're still in 2017. You know, but so finally we start getting support from the greater community, 
and we are growing quickly. Um, and within those next couple of years, you know, between 2017 and 2019, we're just, we're, we vowed basically to not let ourselves get into dev hell. So we're making a lot of concessions um, as far as development goes mm. because, you know, we are appreciating that we are, you know, in version 0. 0.6 beta, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we're kind of embracing that in a way that some of the major builds at the time in the community weren't because we're constantly, what our goal is, is we're putting out content. We're putting out stuff for people to play so that, you know, people keep coming in and they can tell us what they need from us in order to continue having fun with it rather than sitting on it for a year and a half. Everybody is like, okay, whatever. And then even then we're not really done. Morale's low, but we put out something that doesn't warrant a year and a half of development. That's something that we kind of tried to avoid. Um, but by this, by that point, I was I had well cemented myself as you know a main member of you know what at the time was like the big four of Remix, which was this up and coming build that everybody was kind of watching, kind of wondering what was going to happen if it was going to become something bigger. You know what I mean? That's really cool that you were able to stick that process through because it'd be one thing if we were talking and you're talking about how you just pulled out at 2018 or something and you're like, I just can't do it anymore. Can't do it. But you right. stuck through and you continue to grow yourself as a modder. And then as a team deciding we're going to just put something out, not because it's perfect and ready, but because we want to show everybody who's around in our immediate circle and then outside circles looking in that we are continually trying to move forward, that we're trying to put something out so that people can experience what we're trying to shoot for. They can see that vision as often as possible. Exactly. That is exactly what it is. So now we have, you know, this running meme, it's, it's, uh, it's on our banner in our discord where it says release now, improve later <laughs> <laughs> you know, running meme where it's like, it's okay if it's if it has some kinks we're gonna fix it you know but have fun with it um reinforce what you think we need to fix and you know we'll we'll keep working on it if you're patient with us so i feel like one of the one of those things that you had to concede on was like tournament additions if you are trying to continually release things where you're saying i mean that doesn't look that's probably not i mean ugh. Uh, screw it. Let's just release it because you're not necessarily saying we got to make something that like pros can pick up and play and not immediately go on Twitter and drop massive amounts of complaints because that is a pro players do do that sometimes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So a tournament edition, ironically, you know, the conception of remix was a, a tournament yeah. edition build, right? But yes, we absolutely had to make that concession where we, we couldn't even think about that as main development was happening. It didn't help that we were all very ambitious and excited that we were able to produce fairly good original things. Um, so we kind of, even now, we, we kind of have very, very big wants. And in the beginning of the dev process, when it comes to making a new version or a new release, we end up having like 12 work in progress characters. And then we have to narrow it down to like three or four where we're like, okay, let's, we're, we're getting a, a little, our eyes are a little bigger than what we can actually produce. You know what I mean? Um, so tournament edition builds are only something that has been happening in the last you know year where, and even then they're not tournament edition in the traditional sense. What tournament edition is even now, cause we're not even 1.0 yet. You know what I mean? It's exactly, been years, yeah. but we're, we're not even 1.0. What tournament edition is for us is we cut all of the base project M characters, leaving only stuff that we've touched or we've improved or made completely in-house so that people can play with it and we can see if something goes horrifically wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? It is a way for us to continue to collect data and build our lists of things to do, you know? And it's not like there's only a few hundred people doing this. I mean, it's it's one of the most popular Brawl Vault mods out there right now. So all the feedback that you get, what would you say are ones that you appreciate seeing the most or the ones that you wish, ugh, I wish I could forget I saw this? I think that I really love the feedback that I get where when the messages begin as like 
I main this character. They are so fun. Here's what I think you could do to make them more fun for me. And also, this looks weird. Why does it look like that? Like, I appreciate <laughs> when they come out with something positive where it's like, I'm having so much fun with this character, but maybe you guys should check this out. You know what I mean? That's something that I appreciate, and it's something that we get a lot. Um, I have been the lead developer of Isaac from Golden Sun for years now. Um, and that's always something that I love is people coming out and saying, my friend mains Isaac, I main Isaac, but we were playing and we saw this and we thought, this you know those are the kinds of like i i guess the padded complaints that i <laughs> that i really appreciate because it's like when you spend so many hours i mean if i were logging my hours working on remakes you know i i would have a lot of money right now yes <laughs> it's of course. something you, when you dump that much time into it it's it's kind of heartbreaking when you just get knife handed with negatives you know what i mean um sometimes people join and that is what they do. So, you know, it's, I guess it's less of particular messages that I get because, you know, the, it's kind of all over the place what people say about it, but it's more so if people can appreciate that it's, I, I hate to be pretentious, but it's, it's, it's an art in a lot of ways. You know what I mean? In a lot of ways, this development is something that, you know, we're not getting paid for. We don't have a way to make money from it. We just do it because we like to and we care about it. Um, so it's whether or not someone comes in appreciating that fact, I suppose, or whether they're coming in worrying about the fact that, you know, their game just crashed once in three hours and they're super mad about it, <laughs> you know, there's, there's uh, always that chance. I feel like that, that you have to sort of tell yourself I'm, I'm going into like off script territory almost. I'm not playing Nintendo sealed product anymore I'm, t I'm i'm going into modded territory i mean the the mod that i play the most is actually smash remix which is for the 64 i don't know if you've heard of this but they they put in martha mewtwo recently so really really cool mod and it's not like 100 percent perfect uh, i think that what i really like about that is how just knowing that there are people who love 64 as much as I do and love it more than I do because they spend time trying to put in new things, new stages, new whatever, and make the game more fun as well as somewhat competitively viable. It's, Smash Remix is not the standard at tournaments, but that like it could be. And so kudos to them for that. I mean, getting out two or three patches a year, that's that feels like a lot based on what they do. But super cool but yeah sometimes something happens where i'll go like oh wait wait what uh, but, ah whatever because like the point is you just restart it and then you're fine did you try restarting your <laughs> this is something that all people around technology have to say to the people coming and saying this this isn't working did you restart it oh, uh, i guess okay i guess it's working now <laughs> exactly yeah you would i think um or rather, maybe not you in particular, more so just second person people who are outside of the community a little bit, um, would be surprised how interconnected the modding communities of 64 and Melee and Brawl and Ultimate and Smash 4, how interconnected they all are. There's a lot of the same players in a lot of these communities. Um, you know, I have friends who help with Remix Dev who are Smash 64 devs. I have people who, you know, started as Remix devs who now are, you know, developing things like Beyond Melee and like Rushdown Revolt, you know? You know, the they're, um, ooh, maybe I shouldn't say it, but they're, you know, maybe I, I won't name a name and just do just, just They're doing cool they're, stuff. They're doing great stuff in there, you know, and they started as a human <laughs> and that makes me happy, you know? But this entire space of Smash and maybe more broadly platform fighters, a lot of the people who do things for one, very much enjoy the others when it comes to modding i think that it's that those walls are a lot lower you know what i mean it's really cool to hear that there's a almost a certain amount of like camaraderie even if there is still pride and you love the work that you're doing when somebody says i just i just i just don't vibe with it i want to do the complete opposite thing that you're doing right now and it makes you want to pull your hair out like how do you continue to how do you continue? And you would be used to this since you've had to be like the representative of the remix, the remix mod of this. But when you're when you're going around and you're talking to people, they they're doing different things than what you would 
then what you would want to do, you just fall back on that common theme of we love taking something that's great and making it even greater. Right, exactly. And I think that uh, with that comes, you have to have sort of an appreciation for the fact that it might not seem like it at first, but a lot of the people in these communities are a lot more similar than you might think. You know what I mean? Something landed us all here, right? So there's something that we all have in common. Um, so appeal to the things that you know you would like to hear. You know what I mean? Um, that's kind of been my my policy when it comes to like branching out into some of the other communities that I am privileged enough to be a part of. Um, is just what do I like to hear? How do I like people approaching me when it comes to, you know, modding or as a person? What do, you know, because I, I'm out, I'm doing something else. I'm at work. I pick up my phone and this is what I see. How do I want to feel when I see those things, you know? So it, it just comes down to as we get older, because a lot of people do start modding young. As you get older, some of that fire and some of that desire to, get into those tiffs, it kind of dies out and you just start understanding that you're just dealing with a bunch of dudes who like a video game. You know what I mean? And it's like, they're really, really excited about it, but they're people in a lot of other ways than that. So you don't have to make it your entire life and your entire interaction with them and relationship with them, you know? So for you, you get to touch grass by going outside like you are right now, for those who aren't watching, like we said at the beginning, you're outside at your university right now. You're going to school for something that's probably not modding video games, all that kind of stuff. What has your balance been like now that you've gotten to the point where you're starting to understand the responsibilities of being a true adult is like, not that you like, I don't want to tell you, uh, just wait till you have like, anyway the point is uh i'm at i'm at the uh, 26 age bracket presently and i remember when i went from living at home not really having to pay for anything except for you know like my own stuff like meals or movie tickets or whatever to paying for rent and then paying for mortgage that kind of stuff how do you continue to feel the love and desire to get into modding when there are other things that are starting to demand more of your time um, I think appreciating that it is a labor of love. <laughs> so if I'm not feeling love for it, I'm, it's not my job. I, I don't have to do it. You know what I mean? I don't have to log my hours every week. I don't have to log my hours every month. If I need to take a six month break, which I have done, um, you know, then I am completely in my rights to do it. And that is something that is really refreshing because sometimes you just have things that demand too much of you. You know what I mean? And sometimes things start to demand over 100% of what you are. Um, so, you know, going to school, um, working, and, you know, trying to engage with this thing that I've loved since I was a young teenager. It's these are all things that I want to do, but I, it's something that I've definitely had to learn to do in moderation otherwise i get it's it's all that i'll do and other things will start to suffer so it's i i will say that maybe i haven't been the best about staying active in the community i've got i've come back in the last several months um and i've started doing a lot more things for the community you know i picked up um the twitter the remix twitter um i'm constantly in dev chats i'm constantly trying to do things i've picked up animation so that i can be more active in remix dev outside of coding and you know leading it as i normally would do um but i can't take on more than 100 percent capacity at any given time so i think that's all it is is just appreciating that yeah, that's really cool to hear how you're actually able to back away for more than just two days or a week because it's hard. You you start to think to yourself, man, did I really do all that for nothing? Like, am I just like, who am I now? Like when you spend so much time on something and especially when you start to learn how to engage other interests, I, I think this is like an underrated part about going through the teenage years. Like you're really obsessed with something or you have one or two things that you're really into doing. And then you get older and you start to realize it's kind of like a first love when you're with somebody. It There's that kind of feeling that you have when it ends of like, is it ever going to 
how do I get into anything else? Like, I'm never going to forget about that person, that those kind of feelings. And then you have to learn how to like something else. So have you ever experienced that? Or am I just like talking completely like random to you right now? No, you're definitely not talking completely random. Um, I have had periods that's kind of when I end up taking, I have ended up taking breaks from it is I just become hyper fixated on something else for a little bit. You know what I mean? Like I just want to go hike for hours every day, or I just want to go play risk of rain too, or whatever it is. You know what I mean? I want to binge watch a show. Um, and that ends up has ended up being what's taken time that I would have otherwise allotted so that I could be engaging with remix and modding. Um, it happens, you know what I mean? But I think another thing that I left out that maybe I shouldn't have it that keeps me coming back is that I've made some of my best friends in this community, you know what I mean? Like I have my entire life here, you know what I mean, obviously, but I've known a lot of these people since I was 15 years old, 16 years old, 17 years old. And when you, I've known them for years and you know what I mean? They know a lot about me. I know a lot about them and we've been working together for so long. It's like, it's, it's, that's something that keeps me coming back is that, you know, well, they want to do this thing and they need me for it. And I like hanging out with them. I like messaging them. I like cracking jokes when we drop files that we don't, that we know don't work. You know what I mean? Whatever <laughs> that helps. And it, it's something that I've been very, very adamant about. Um, and you know, some of the other people who lead the project have been as well is like, look, life comes first and also more than that something that i've pushed a lot is like we are friends before we're co-workers or co-devs whatever you know what i mean <laughs> like it's okay if you can't do this thing for release we're still friends i don't hate you <laughs> you know what i mean even if you don't have a reason it you're not feeling it it is a passion project i'm not paying you you know what i mean do what you enjoy because you're my friend and i want you to and so coming into a space where I get to hang out with so many of my friends and make something together, it helps a lot. It's like having coworkers that you like at work. You know what I mean? It's, it's really the same thing. It keeps me coming back and it keeps me getting interested in things that everybody wants to work on. Yeah. Cause you're seeing your friends go get the big dubs boss, man. That's really, really cool to hear. Exactly. Yeah. Speaking and of, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, please go ahead. Uh, speaking of the uh, speaking of the whole uh, friends idea, people that kind of help you to stay in coming in, we recently started talking because I had on Vigilante Blade, who is now participating a little bit in the remix space. Uh, I don't think doing a ton of coding or animating or anything like that, but just the Vigilante Blade, for those who don't know, is an OG PM development team member and has kind of gone in and out a little bit, at, you know, something that you understand, but it's like sort of like wanting to be around the, around the fire, around the sauce a little bit more recently. So uh, how did that happen? And like, what was your, like, you didn't, you didn't fall in love with PM first. You fell in love with the Alm build, which is really interesting to me. This is probably, right. you're probably on a, on a, on a small list compared to the people who talk about how they fell in love with PM. So right. like when somebody like Vigilante Blade comes out of the blue or however, and says, oh, I want to, you know, help to whatever extent I can, like, how do you take those kind of, how, how do you take those kind of interactions? Well, I have interacted with, uh, allegedly interacted with a lot more um, former Project M development team members than one would expect because I think that a lot of people think that they're gone. Um, but a lot of them are. A lot of them, you know, maybe they're not super hands on about it, but they like watching what's happening because it's something that they help to nourish and foster in a very, very big way. You know what I mean? Um, so I've been friends with a few. Um, people like that, but I, the tie between Vigilante Blade and I is more so that he was the one that um, that ha he came up with a lot of like the earlier concepts for Isaac um, in when he was still planned for Project M. He came up with a lot of the moveset plans, like a lot of the core mechanics and things like that. And now, for the past few years, I've been the one leading Isaac development. So it was it was pretty recently but i just said something innocuous um in the public channels about like 
Oh, somebody had reposted, uh, I think his blog post where he um, posted all of the old concepts that he had for Isaac. And I responded about, back to it saying that I had heard of a lot of them before and kind of my stance on it and the direction I was taking the character and things like that. And somebody said like, oh, he's in the server. And I was like, he's here. He's in the server. Okay. Oh, word. word. Yeah. I want to, well, that is a dialogue I want to open. I want to talk about Isaac. You know, I want to see what he thinks about where he's at right now. That's so exciting um, because I'm super proud of this character. I want to talk about it. So we opened up that dialogue. And since then, he's he's hanging out in most of my projects. We're just buddies. We talk all the time on Discord. You know what I mean? And he's super supportive of me and of Remix. And I I appreciate him a lot. You know, he's he's been really awesome as far as being a good motivator to close out my projects and stuff like that. Because you still feel like Isaac is not completely to the vision that you have. Like, even though the character's out, people play Isaac, they people play Isaac that's already really really cool but you're but you you still have things that you feel like is like it's unfinished business one more job or whatever you want to phrase it it is so uh <laughs> a, a pretty cool scoop about that is that Isaac is rapidly approaching a spot where I will consider my work with him done after very long years um and that is with the help of not just Vigilante Blade, who was a former Project M development team member. It w It is with the help of of three additional ex-Project M devs who are oh. all now complete the character, you know? So it's really exciting. Um, I feel like I'm in a really cool spot in his development where I have a, everything that I need to, to make him sick, <laughs> and to make him fun, and to finish him, you know? One last push, and then it's almost like and this is sort of getting into the idea of like what's next, like those kind of next steps for you is when, whenever that release happens, what's going to be next for you after that? I mean, you still have school, the girlfriend, all that kind of stuff. Is it going to be sort of like a, take a few steps back and let it, let it be out there for a little while? Or do you feel like there's something that's capturing your attention right after that in terms of development? There's always something capturing my attention in terms of development. Um, <laughs> That's that is uh, true. That's what keeps you coming back a little bit. All the people saying, "Hey, Trevor, check this out," and you're like, "Oh, that's cool." I wonder. Wait, wait, I'm doing it again. Yeah, exactly. And it, there's a very, very prominent meme in brawl modding, and it's that nobody leaves. <laughs> and people try, people try to quit over and over, but they always come back. It, it is almost <laughs> without fail. It is. A, it is more of a rule than it is exceptions that people say that they quit uh, give them a couple months they're back <laughs> it's, 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 seriously that's you in um after isaac i think that to give a serious answer i probably i guess it depends um on if i'm if all my momentum's burned out by then because a lot of other things will be releasing parallel to isaac that we're working Ooh. on um so, I mean, there's a lot more happening than just him. Um, if my energy is expended, I, I mean, I suspect that us as a unit, as a dev team in an official capacity, we'll be taking a few steps back and letting everybody rest <laughs> because we're pumping out some pretty serious stuff right now um, or getting ready to, I should say. Um, as for me, I'm sure that I'll be pulling up notes on my phone because I got a cool idea for some random moveset. I mean, the, a couple of days ago, I had the most obscure idea and I've, I've been getting roasted in the dev chats for it, but I'm like, I'm going to make a Porygon move set, you know, I, from Pokemon. Like <laughs> it's stuff like that where I'm like, no, I know what I want. You know, <laughs> Let's go on the Porygon. Yeah. Come on. Anybody right. who wants to, anybody who wants to hop in and this, this brings us full circle. This is a question that I wanted to ask you when I first heard you talking about, getting into these discords at a younger age let's say another 15 year old comes into the discord and is like saying oh my gosh oh my gosh like in all the chats you know trying to fill up chat trying to be like hi i'm here and is like you know i i do know how to do stuff um, i know i totally know how to do stuff and you're seeing kind of yourself has that happened and if it hasn't happened like what would your what would would you just go straight to hey look <laughs> we're gonna, i i know 
I've been here, so this is what's going to happen. We'll start you off nice and easy. Don't don't try and tell me that you know how to do something super complicated. It has happened. Um, there is a dude who's been in our dev rooms for a few years now. Um, his name is Eli, and uh, for a couple of years now, we've been talking, and uh, he's, a, he's a few years younger than me. Um, and he, he does remind me of myself in a lot of ways. Um, we have pretty different skill sets, but it, he has like a fire in his belly that I see a lot. And um, we, he just strikes me as somebody who has experienced a lot of similar things, uh, you know, relative to me. Um, and I, you know, I call him, I call him my little brother, you know, because it's like, he's, you know, he's not little, he's, he's a, a fully capable person. Um, but I do feel like that connection to him where it's like, I see me, you know what I mean? And we have a lot of people who are, are doing very huge, amazing things now. Um, that like, because I'm, I, I, as the PR person, whatever, I handle a lot of the personnel development, recruiting stuff, you know what I mean? Um, and people who I've recruited who, who otherwise were just kind of consumers of Remix, um, now they're doing amazing things in the community. And it makes me happy, you know, because it, you know, Remix is, um, you know, save for the obvious exception that is P+, which I don't consider necessarily to be in the same sphere of, of modding as, you know, the greater modding community. But um, we are the biggest, like, custom build and the, with the most downloads and the most people who come around and check it out. Um, that's us now, you know what I mean? Uh and so in a similar way, it's really awesome to see somebody who's just kind of starry-eyed who comes in being like, I really loved this video, this and that. And like you say, doing some of the same things that I did where they are just trying so desperately to be seen and then they become a huge modder, big shot, see their names in everything. They're a part of everything. You know, it's it's really, really cool. And I can't claim any credit for that. It just is cool to see. <laughs> That's awesome that there is a little bit of a full circle moments that you've been able to experience and that there are really cool things coming in the near future or however you want to phrase it. I don't want to put a, an exact date in your mouth, but that there's some cool stuff coming up for the remix. So in terms of shout outs that you would like to make to the development team that is alongside of you, that does amazing things that it you know who you are so i will say that instead of making trevor say that but for you who comes to mind when it when you think about all the people who are helping out with this project oh man as far as particular shout outs it's so difficult because we've been upsizing so much that i just know that i would forget some key members it's really difficult to say but i will thank and you know shout outs to um shout outs to alm and troy and you know Neroven because those are guys who are a few years older than me and they really hardcore took me under their wing and you know being 15 years old in this community they they helped bring me up and you know in some ways it's weird to say but they helped to raise me in in some in some ways you know what i mean so it's stuff like that that i appreciate a ton and obviously every single person who is in remix step because everybody has their place and you know i tag people at horrifying times of the night asking <laughs> get a model rigged or whatever it is because I had a stupid idea for something, you know, I tag everybody equally. <laughs> just wake me. up and you have ideas, dude. Yeah. So, I mean, absolutely everybody who was willing to be tossed in, um, most of them by me because I, I scoop up a lot of people, you know what I mean? So everybody who's been willing to be tossed in and bothered all the time <laughs> to, to make this, this super cool, project that I, I love so much that is PMEX Remix, right? That's really, really cool. And so that pretty much gets us to where we are now. And in terms of the broader community, we're talking about all of Smash now. I pay attention a lot to Melee because that's where I'm in. But when I have conversations with Stude, or when I have conversations with Vigilante Blade or Wisely about Project Plus and all of the mods that are around and, and not necessarily PMEX Remix specifically, which is why I'm talking to you today. I wanted to learn more about it. Like I just think about how 
for someone like me, the part that I can do in all of this is to give you a platform to sort of share your story and share the story of the of the of this really really cool mod that even if I I haven't tried playing it yet myself that I still think what is happening is very cool and that you and the rest of the team and everybody who plays the game, who downloads it, who just gives it the time of day, you know, is really really cool and I don't want that to necessarily go away. How do you react to something like Nintendo giving Ultimate and Melee a circuit and that sort of stuff? I saw a lot of people on Twitter posting about Project Plus specifically because that's sort of the face of the of the modded games around Smash, but just feeling like, oh, okay, so I guess we're all supposed to just sort of go away conveniently, aren't we? Like, that's kind of the sentiment that I saw. What was your own reaction to hearing something like that? Um, I think it's great. I approach it with very, very, very cautious optimism. Um, someday, depending on the day, pessimism. Um, just because I, I know how Nintendo is about some of these things, and about things that don't fall into line. Um, and I know that they like sometimes to kind of twist the narrative of things so that they can have their way um, when it comes to their IPs and things like that. Um, I think it's great and I hope that it does well and I hope that Nintendo has as little to do with it as possible, you know, save for their, obviously, their endorsement and hopefully financial support. Um, because, I mean, if I'm being completely honest, I don't trust them <laughs> with Smash at all. Um and it's true that, you know, the modded community, including Project Plus, which is absolutely massive, it is a behemoth, you know what I mean, um, will never get that support, I don't think, from Nintendo. Uh, and it's 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 hard for me to be bitter about it, I suppose, because that's what I'm used to. I'm used to kind of that ostracization um, and not expecting anything if anything wanting to stay low profile enough to not get noticed you know um so while it's upsetting i know that there will be a space for you know the modded community and for project plus and things like that at circuits that are not officially endorsed maybe um and you know obviously in people's living rooms and things like that so while it's maybe a little upsetting and discouraging and I'm a little pessimistic about it. Um, I know that modding has its place and I very sincerely hope that that won't go away, even if other communities, you know, get that attention and hopefully flourish from it. Right. Because there's some people who have a vision or a hope that maybe we could be in that like special attention category where uh, everybody knows who we are and what we're doing. And I think that it's fair to say that if it's PM EX Remix or if it's Project Plus, that there's, I mean, aside from people who love the game, play the game, talk about the game, there are people who literally work on it, who are modding it, who are trying to make it better every day. So there's almost or maybe even more, you can make an argument that there's more work being put into that. And so like, why is this the one being thrown under the rug or tossed in the garbage or however you want to phrase it? Like however you react to something where it's like, yeah, Melee it, it, it probably deserves a little bit of credit in regards to how people try to do stuff with the software to make it as optimized as possible while also being like sneaky. It's not really about it. Trust us, wink, wink. Like, you know, Frozen Stadium, that sort of stuff. But for for all the work that goes into any of the modded Smash games, I feel like maybe that's part of it is that there's just so much work being done and people are doing it for free because they love the game and instead all they get of for sorry, all they get from the publisher is like you really need to just like not do this. It's a it's a really it's it's the biggest thing that you have to put up with when you are in where you are, Trevor. It, it definitely is, you know, um, being intimidated <laughs> by, you know, the, the company and, you know, the, the name that we're also inspired by and that got us started, you know what I mean? 
like we're modding in Nintendo characters from our favorite Nintendo published games, you know, um, for them to be this entity that is looming always and is intimidating and is scary and upsetting. It's really unfortunate. Um, and it's hard for a lot of people to separate those things. You know what I mean? When it's like, I grew up playing Super Mario and also Nintendo, if they had the resources, would personally send me a letter telling me to stop what I'm doing and threaten legal action. You know what I mean? Um, it's a really, really strange divide. Um, but like I said, you know, modding has its place. And all I can really hope is that people who enjoy Smash a lot and enough to play it professionally and to get really, really good at it, you know, the people who you who you see on Twitter and you retweet and you reply to and you hope that they like your comment. I just hope that people like that aren't discouraged from engaging with some of the more niche aspects of the community like modding and things like that because of maybe Nintendo becoming more involved in the scene. And something else that I would like <clears throat> that I think of is how we that it can't go away. Like the modding part of the thing, like we're we all a lot of us are here because of of either getting into mods at some point. I mean, I think if I recall correctly on the latest Melee Stats episode, Wrangler was talking about how he loved playing Project Plus more than any other Smash game at first. And he would only play Project Plus and only somewhat recently or maybe in the past few years got into playing Melee and has decided, you know what, I can do I could do Melee. But Wrangler was like originally like a big Project M player. Like, people who get into smash like yourself. I mean, like you were saying, you, you got in partially because of growing up with melee and brawl, but you actually started to really get in when you found those project M Lucas combo videos. Hopefully as people get into smash because of a circuit or because of the next, the next game that comes out on the next console system, they'll come in, they'll look up combo videos or they'll look up compilations, whatever it may be and go, wait a minute, that's a different game than, wait, what? what's happening? And then they do the same thing that you did or the same thing that I did. Would you just fall more in love with the game and you find communities who say, we're doing some really cool stuff. We're either modding or we're doing tournaments or we're making controllers. We're doing all kinds of fun stuff. Hopefully that can continue and that the modded games, even if they don't get official love and respect, that we all acknowledge that side of the community. That is that is about all I can hope for is that Smash Smash as an entity separate from Nintendo can continue to support and appreciate um, you know all of these all of these things that that is modding and all of these builds and Project Plus and things like that. Like a lot of people after you know when Free Melee started trending, um, a lot of people did come out afterwards and supplement that with. By the way, let's talk about Project M and. I love that and I appreciate it so much and I hope that people continue to do that because it's important to me, you know what I mean? And it's important to a lot of people and it's it's interesting being a part of Smash while also being in this, you know, tiny, comparatively tiny niche corner of the community that it's like, I want to share this so badly with everybody else who plays Smash, you know? Um, but there are barriers in communication keeping people from getting into it like that. And I just hope that Nintendo doesn't become another one of those. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's a good way to phrase it. So before we get going here for myself, I need to make sure that I give shout outs to uh, one particular player for getting to smash summit 12 on the melee side of things. This is coming up. Not, not this weekend that we're about to get into, but the following weekend free Palestine, who is a player based in Ohio, I believe got into smash summit 12 and will be playing with some of the best players in the world, like Zane and mango. That's really cool. It's through the vote in process, I should say. So congrats to free Palestine and shout outs to all the other players that got in via voting and that sort of stuff. Oh, Oh my gosh, the 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 theater. Um, what is it called? It's something to do with the theater. It's it's a PM Invitational that's going to be happening next year. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to be really cool. Are they going to? Oh my gosh, will you try to get a PMEX remix side event snuck into there somehow? Are we going to do something like that? Is that what we're working on right now, Trevor? Will I try to? Can you repeat that? Will I try to what? <laughs> Are you going to try to get PMX Remix 
into that P project plus invitational in some capacity, like a side event, something like let's show off all the modded bra stuff. That would be, that would be incredible. Um, I don't know that that's in the cards immediately. I don't know that we're at a spot where I would be comfortable walking away from something like that and not looming around being like, it's okay. That's going to be fixed. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I think that <laughs> I know, I think it'll, it'll be a little bit, but maybe not as long as people might worry um, before we're to a spot where things like that would be something that myself and some of the other devs are ready for it, whether or not the, the community would embrace us in that kind of way, I couldn't say. I don't know. Well, would be so cool though. <laughs> all the all the potential buzz that comes out with the next release, if it happens before, I think the Project Plus Invitational happens in March. So if the newest build, the newest patch, if you will, of the of the Remix mod comes out before then, maybe there'll be enough buzz. We'll see. <laughs> that would be cool. That would be cool. I'd like to just go. <laughs> that would be very so cool. Also. I can just whisper to people who are waiting to play, be like, hey, by the way, have you played Remix? Because I hear it's good. <laughs> <laughs> you're still doing that thing, though. You're like trying to show up in as many places as possible. That's really cool. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me today. It was a little bit light, and now it's dark over there, and you have other stuff that you'll be needing to get to in a soon ish amount of time. But I. Like I said, really appreciate you taking the time. Before we get going here, please tell the people where they can find you and also where they can find the official Remix build and mod. Absolutely. You can find me at WhoIsKoo on Twitter. Um, and then from there, it shouldn't be difficult to find the Remix Twitter and then the uh, the Discord as well. But at, you know, at PMEX Remix. Also, you know, make sure to follow us on Twitter. We're two follows away last time I checked from 500. We've gained 450 followers in the last, you know, three weeks. I'm really excited about it. And there's big stuff coming soon with the little trademark. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Soon TM. <laughs> yep, exactly. People like exactly. sick clips on Twitter, regardless of what it is. So I'm glad that, like, you're out there showing the people, hey, we got the goods. We, I think we do got the goods. And I'm glad that you said it first, Jesse, because I think we got the goods. <laughs> I'm excited to see uh, the release and such. When I have a half decent computer, because I'm working with a very not decent laptop, I want to. Tr I just want to try everything. Ugh. I feel held back by the hardware that I have currently, but but I am very excited to try all this kind of stuff in the hopefully hopefully near future. And if it's going to be the new build as well, I mean that'd be super exciting. I certainly for you and Blade want to try out Isaac because. I remember seeing Isaac as an assist trophy in Brawl and thinking, now why isn't he in the game? Because he looks like a natural, like unique character. It was all these sword characters. I can't believe I thought that of Brawl. I think we might have too many sword characters. <laughs> Little did I know. <laughs> right, yeah. Oh, believe me, that's an archetype that is completely beaten to death in modding as well. <laughs> when somebody says, we're going we're gonna to not do a sword character, everybody goes, so like a heavyweight like punching person <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's our favorite archetypes it seems <laughs> but once again trevor thank you so much for joining me on bottom of smash mountain thank you so much Jeff.